Welcome back to Math and Art with Mrs. Mays. Today we will be creating a tessellation. The supplies you need, 3x5 note card, tape, scissors, a pencil, colored pencils, and a piece of paper. To begin with, we need to create a square out of our 3x5 note card. If you have a ruler, you can just measure three inches and cut across because you know this is three inches. I don't have a ruler today, so I am just going to use another card as a measurement. I can then cut on that line and I have a three by three square out of my note card. So using this square, I will start my tessellation pattern. Now that we have our three by three square cut out of the note card, we are gonna create a design from one vertice to the other. So like um, last time with the tessellation translation, and hopefully you did that one first, it's a little easier. You don't want it to be too intricate because you've got to cut it out and then you need to trace it repeatedly. So I'm gonna start exactly in one corner and just make some sort of design here and end up back in the other corner. So from adjacent vertice to vertice, I make a design. I am now gonna take my scissors and cut that out. All right, so now I've cut out the design I made. I started exactly in one corner and ended in the other corner. We are going to rotate this cutout piece. It doesn't matter if you rotate it up or down, so this first one doesn't matter. I am gonna rotate mine up so these corners remain together and I'm just gonna take this piece and rotate it or turn it up here. The flat edges should match perfectly. I take a little piece of tape and I match them up exactly and I tape it. Now we're gonna create a design on the side that is not cut yet and is adjacent to the side we already cut. So not the side facing it, but the one adjacent. So this one down here for me. You're gonna start exactly in one corner. It's a little tricky because mine's pretty narrow. Make a design and end in the adjacent corner. So I'm gonna start right here. Make a design and end in the adjacent corner. That's my design. I'm going to take my scissors and cut it out. Okay, so now that this piece is cut out, I'm going to rotate it, keeping this corner together, rotate it around until the flat edges meet, and I will take that. Now it's time to determine what it looks like. So you kind of turn your piece around. Remember, they usually look like something in nature or art. Hmm, I'm having a little bit of a, well, this could be kind of a fun fish with its mouth and its fins. What else do I see? A bird, here's his beak and his head. I like the bird and maybe he's sitting in a nest so this will be a bird sitting in a nest. I'm going to get my piece of paper, put my pattern in the middle, and I am going to trace it. So now that I have traced the piece in the middle of my paper, I'm going to rotate it to continue the pattern around my paper. This one's a little different than the translation, so I've got to kind of see where does it fit. So this I can tell fits right up here like this, and I will trace my piece again. It's okay if it goes off the paper, but you need to trace everything that is on the paper. And now it should just rotate and match up here, and then we trace it, and then it should rotate and match up here, ah, right there, 
and we trace it, and then it should rotate and match up here, and we trace it. And this will continue around your paper, because then you can see here, if I rotate this, it matches right up here, and I can trace it again. Once you've got this rotated and traced all over your paper, you can go in and draw in the features to make um, your design look like what you think it should be. Hope you enjoyed this tessellation rotation. Have fun with math and art.